for us to put this Veterans would receive 
that are attributable to this exemption would be shifted onto the remaining taxpayers in the town. If adopted today or prior to December 1st of 2008, then this exemption would apply to the 2009 assessment roll, and the exemption would first appear on the January 2010 town tax bills. <clears throat> the statute provides that the portion of the Cold War veteran exemption that covers service and not the disability portion shall run for 10 years. The disability portion remains in place and does not expire after 10 years. The commencement of the 10-year period is the first assessment rule that is prepared after the local law is passed. If the town adopts the 15% exemption as outlined previously, we estimate <clears throat> that a Cold War veteran would save approximately $24.74 per year on the town tax. A veteran that is 100% disabled would save an additional amount of approximately $82.48 per year for a combined total of $107.22. As the County of Orange has recently already adopted this exemption, we estimate that here in New Windsor, for a Cold War veteran without a disability, the total amount saved on the county and town tax combined would be approximately $51.71 per year. A Cold War veteran with 100% disability will save an estimated total of $254.07 per year on the county and town tax combined. And at this point, I'll answer any questions that anybody might have. <coughs> no questions. Not as much as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned, uh, I didn't, it went by me quick. Uh, if this goes through, we, uh, currently we have some exemptions. Uh, would they, uh, do we have to make a choice between the two or would it just be added? Um, well, you can only get one or the other. If you're already receiving a veteran's exemption, that means that you're either getting the eligible funds exemption, which is the old original veteran's exemption, which was based on uh, where people, veterans, uh, took some of their mustering out money and they used it to purchase a house. We don't have too many of those, a handful of them. Uh, but most of the veterans that have uh, the alternative veteran's exemption is for anybody who served during a period of war, okay? And if you have that already, then this is not something that you're eligible for. It's one or the other. Okay. And the, the alternative veterans exemption does provide a slightly greater uh, tax exemption than what this one would. I have the uh, STAR program and the enhanced STAR program. This is completely separate. Completely different. And you can get, you can get all that together. You can get the enhanced STAR, you can get the low-income senior, you can get the Cold War veteran, they're all independent of one another. But you can't get the Cold War veteran exemption, and what I call now the hot war exemption, the alternative veterans exemption. On the veterans exemption, it's one or the other. Now, as far as the county part goes now, would that still be true? I think I have part, some for the county and some for that. Well, if you've been getting an exemption already, <clears throat> since this has only been adopted recently, that tells me you're probably getting the alternative veterans exemption. Yeah. Okay, and you'd be getting that on the town and on the county tax, yeah. and that would be a greater break for you than what this would be. And $80 a year or something like that, correct? Right. Thank you. That, well, that would be during a period of conflict. Right, during you a period of You served during a period yeah. of conflict. You didn't have to be in it, but serving, you know, I was during stateside, period. but I was training, in training. Yeah. Uh, so as long as you serve during a period of conflict, you have the alternative. If you serve during a period of non-conflict, You'll be eligible for this Cold War veterans exemption. I see. Well, that helps everybody. Yeah. yeah. If I was in the uh, current year, you're just like that. Yeah. Who yeah. well, calculated yeah. these figures with the twenty-four and fifty-five dollars? I did. You did that. That's accurate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, I recalculated it today because when I had given it the calculations uh, six months ago, we had different equalization rates. I recalculated it this morning. If Todd calculated it, it's right. It's right. <laughs> Mr. Green didn't calculate, did he? <laughs> no. Todd, like I said, Todd calculated it. Calculate it. <laughs> it's right. Todd has done. Todd, Todd brought this to us, and uh, originally he's the one that brought our attention to it, and uh, did all the calculations, did all the legwork on it, and uh, presented it, and uh, did a very good job on, on behalf of the veterans. Uh, I think so. And, and Todd, thank you. Well, thank you. Yes. Uh, one quick thing, Todd. Why did the, the town and the county wait so long? That's a good question. Um, this law was originally passed 
a little over a year ago, and we studied it, and there were a few problems with the original legislation. Um, biggest one was that the way the statute was originally written, the Cold War veterans needed to get what's known as a Cold War uh, certificate from the Veterans Affairs Office. And we were told, and the Veterans Affairs Office admitted that it could take up to six months for them to issue it. They had bigger priorities. Yeah. And uh, so we could have had a situation that, although we passed it last year, uh, we would have had veterans who applied but were unable to dock, get that Cold War certificate. And uh, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to grant the exemption. And that would have been problematic. Another problem was that the original statute required that the veterans had to file every year. And we, the assessors, uh, argue that, you know, if they're a Cold War veteran today, they're going to be a Cold War veteran next year. You know, don't torment us and the veterans with paperwork. And they very quickly, when they came back in the session for this uh, cycle that just ended, the state legislature uh, immediately corrected uh, the statute. And the county had hesitated and not adopted it until this cycle also. That they could have adopted it last year, but for the same reasons, they didn't. You're seeing all these towns across the state now are starting to adopt it now. Okay, so, yeah, there was one year there. We, we could have adopted it, but we didn't because it was problematic. I sent for that certificate you're speaking about a week after I saw it in the paper. Guess what? I never received it. It's a year later. I never received it. We, we waited. We knew that when Todd first presented it to us, we knew that the state was going to change the legislation to make it less cumbersome. And you know every municipality waited until the state state changed, as did the county. And as soon as they changed it, we you know decided we wanted to get it enacted as quick as possible. Now, if we did it in January or we do it in July or we did it in August, it wouldn't matter because it only affects the uh, the, uh, the tax roll for next year. Right. The next the only deadline that would apply would be the December first. Uh, there's a provision in the law that for any given assessment roll has to be adopted by December 1st of the prior year. So as long as we adopt it by December 1st of this year, we can put it on for the 2009 assessment roll. Okay. Anyone else? Barney. Uh, am I correct in understanding that if you were a member of the National Guard during that Cold War period, uh, and not, not the <coughs> Active, go, but not the active army here, but a member of the National Guard. They are not active. That's, That's correct, right. unless you served uh, active duty for other than training. So you hadn't been activated to active duty status. At least a year, I think it was. No, that's another thing they changed. The original statute said you had to be active duty for a year. When they amended the legislation, they took that requirement out. So theoretically, even if you served a day, but were honorably discharged, uh, you're eligible. They changed it quite a bit. Yeah. Anyone else? Todd, again, thank you. You did a good job on this, and on behalf of all the veterans, thank you. Show the motion the town board of town to close the public hearing in the matter of the establishment of the partial tax exemption to certain Cold War veterans. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Wyant? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. Chair of the town motion of the town board of the town of New Windsor pursuant to section 10 and 11 of the municipal home rule law adopt amendment to chapter 263 of the town code of the town of New Windsor in accordance with the local law attached here to and direct the town clerk to publish pursuant to law. To law. This amendment provides a partial tax, uh, property tax exemption for Cold War veterans. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Lyon? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. How to get Good job. <coughs> General Lieutenant, the motion of the Town Board of Town Woods approve the minutes of public hearing regarding the establishment of drainage district number 13, Shadowfax Road and Subdivision, in Orange County Community Development Block Area in fiscal year 2009, in the minutes of the Town Board meeting all held on June 4, 2008, as per copies posted on the Town Court's Bulletin Board and Town Hall. Same with the student at the East Report members. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Lyon? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. <clears throat> 
to entertain a motion to adopt the following resolution, whereas New York State has awarded the Town of Windsor Highway Department a state fiscal year 2008-2009 legislative in initiative in the total amount of $75,000 for the purchase of a new chipper, and where are certain procedures are required, which include the execution of an agreement to provide for the reimbursement of expenses. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Town Board of Town of Windsor authorized the Town Supervisor to enter in enter into and execute an agreement and all related documents with the New York State Department of Transportation for the state fiscal year 2008-2009 legislative initiative in the total amount of $75,000 for the purchase of a new chipper. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasani? Yes. Councilman Mayan? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Yes, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Senator Larkin for his efforts in obtaining that uh, legislation, that memorandum. Uh, we desperately need a new chipper. Desperately. Hearing no objections, the Town Board of Town of Windsor receiving file of developers agreement between the Town of Windsor and the uh, Manor at Cornwall LLC dated uh, June 19, 2008. Hearing no objections, the Town Board of Town of Windsor received a file escrow agreement between the Town of Windsor and the Manor at Cornwall LLC, dated June 19, 2008. Hearing no objections, the Town Board of Town of Windsor received a file of the Town Clerk, fully executed lease between the Town of Windsor and the Orange and the County of Orange for the lease of three new 20 passenger wheelchair lift to foot buses for dial bus. At last, we will begin. Hopefully next week. Chair, I'll take a motion to the Town Board of Town Windsor to adopt the following resolution, whereas the Town Windsor pursued the Title IX of the Environmental Protection Act of 1993, uh, State Fiscal Year 2008, or the Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund Act of 1965, Federal Fiscal Year 2009 program, which is to apply to the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation for a grant in the amount of $229,244 for a project entitled Mount Airy, uh, Lighting at Mount Airy Sports Complex, which is a uh, project that's located in the town of Windsor. And whereas said grant application requires the applicant of the municipality to obtain the approval and endorsement of the governing body of the municipality, which the project is located, and whereas the grant requires a 50% match of funds awarded. And whereas the town board of the town of Windsor has determined that this project is a type 2 action on the state environmental uh, quality Review Act, which would have no adverse environmental impact. Now, therefore, be resolved that one, the Town Board of Town of Windsor approves and endorses the application to the uh, OPRHP for the grant in accordance with provisions of Title IX of the Environmental Protection Act of 1993 or the Federal uh, Land and Water Conservation Act of 1965 for a project entitled Lighting at Manor Sports Complex, which is located within this community. The Town Board of Town of Windsor authorized supervisor to apply for and afterwards further authorized the required 50% match of funds, said sum not to exceed $229,244. And upon approval of said grant, further authorized supervisor to enter into an executed project agreement and all other necessary documents in order to implement said grant and make this, uh, distributions as warranted. So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Moyan? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. Chairman Tenney Motion, Town Board of Town of Windsor appointed with Elizabeth Malarkey of 325 Blooming Grove Turnpike, Windsor, New York, to Town of Windsor Assessment Review Board. Term should begin immediately and expire September 30th, 2013. This is to uh, replace a, a member that had to uh, leave the board because of uh, work conflict. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Lyon? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Stating. Supervisor Green? Yes. Chair on the motion to Town Board of Town and Winter Authorized Supervisor to engage to services from Mobility Housing and Natural Consulting Engineers PC regarding the preparation of floodplain analysis for Willow Lane to St. Anne Drive as per approved hourly fee schedule and to execute any necessary documents in connection with the same. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Lyon? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. Hearing no objections, Town Board of Town New Windsor receiving file, fully executed memorandum of agreement 
dated July 2nd, 2008, between the Town of Windsor and First Columbia International Group LLC regarding the Restore New York Round 2 grant project number W038. So move. That's a recent point. I'm sorry. Chair, I a motion to Town Board of Town of Windsor to authorize the establishment of performance bond for Morrisville Estate Subdivision. Uh, planning board number 98-4 in the amount of $64,620 as recommended by Macaulay House and Netzel PC uh, by correspondence dated July 2nd, 2008. Mr. Supervisor, this I will move. Okay. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasada? Yes. Councilman Hawaiian? Yes. Councilman Markey? Yes. Yes. Hearing no objections, Town Board of Town Norns are receiving call fully executed grant this uh, first month of agreement dated June 27, 2008 between the Town of Windsor and the New York State Urban Development Corporation doing business as the Empire State Development Corporation regarding the restored New York Round 2 grant project W038. All <coughs> reports received, recorded, and filed with the Town Clerk, Building Department for the month of May 2008. Building part for the month of June 2008, park and budget for the month of May 2008, receiver of taxes, final uh, property tax statement, month of June 2008, town clerk's report for the month of June 2008, recreation department, June 2008, receiver of taxes, water, sewer, and garbage, June 2008, Justice Thorpe, June 2008, and Justice Sullivan, 2008. volunteers uh, for the town's solar concert series. Your ideas have been proven to be very beneficial and successful. We thank you for always going the extra yard for our residents. You are an inspiration to to all uh, to give our best in all we do. Thank you very much. In case anybody doesn't know it, for the concert series uh, that went out and uh, solicited donations, uh, knowing the things are tight this year, in the amount of it's over 6200 Right around 6200 very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to read another letter. This is from the Department of Health in Orange County. It's to the supervisor, the town board. Your supervisor, the town board. Congratulations for being chosen as having the best drinking water in Orange County. On June 7, 2008, and being selected to represent Orange County in the New York State Regional Drinking Water Contest in 2008. Don't you laugh now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to be held up July, uh, July 10th in New York City. Your interest and concern in providing quality drinking water to your consumers is sincerely appreciated. Good luck at the regionals. And the truth of the matter is, we do have wonderful water when we're not on Brown's Pond. And the water is excellent. And uh, my congratulations to Camo, John and Gito, and uh, you know, everybody involved. And uh, I just thought that I knew somebody in the audience would laugh, however. But it's, it's not Brown's Pond water, and hopefully it's never going to be. OK. Next announcement is something that I've been looking forward to and the board has been looking forward to for quite a while now. We received notification yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, the Affordable Senior Housing Project in Vales Gate has received its approvals for uh, state funding. Uh, the Housing Trust Fund is providing $4,361,830 and there is $994,014 in tax credits. So we will be having an affordable senior housing project in the town of Windsor. Wonderful. Great. Whereabouts? Pardon? Where's it going to be? It's uh, that property break the, break, right behind the Valesgate Firehouse, between Valesgate Firehouse, the one side of the Valesgate Firehouse, and Rao Plumbing in the back there. Okay. Yeah. So I am very pleased. Uh, How did we sign up? 
Pardon? Where did we sign up? <laughs> you sign up actually, uh, you know, that, that's a good point, Bert. I'm glad you mentioned that. Anybody that's interested should go to Debbie's office and put their name. You've got a list started already, right? Yes. She's got a list started. Get their name on a list. So anybody that's either watching on television or watching on the internet or whatever uh, and is interested, you know, there's, there's uh, income restrictions. You know, it's, there's income restrictions, but anybody that's interested uh, should go in and see Debbie. Okay, nothing from the board, did I ask you? Yeah. Hmm? Uh, no, we're going to do that in August. I think. Pardon? Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to open the portal for him. <laughs> she thought I forgot about it. Yeah. Bill's sitting back there just dying to say something. I know it. So, Bill, go ahead. You got the floor first. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned uh, last meeting that uh, I would attend the uh, public hearing uh, next month on uh, the uh, amendments to the age restricted housing. Unfortunately, I have another meeting, so I cannot attend the regional type meeting. I will present my comments in writing. I did indicate at that meeting that I anticipated presenting favorable comments. Unfortunately, uh, I've now uh, received the map uh, under Freedom of Information, and I find that uh, the parcels west of the throughway are located uh, within the ground pond watershed, uh, basically adjacent to the reservoir. And uh, it's my belief that that would be detrimental to the uh, water supply, uh, and certainly is not consistent from my perspective in writing to each of the board members to the best of my ability. I had hoped to, uh, to be able to speak at that meeting, but it's uh, one conflict uh, that I can't, uh, can't avoid. So, uh, well, you're going to give me the, your, your comments prior to the meeting so I can include them in the minutes, Bill? I'm gonna, well, I, I don't know how I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to. If you just give it to me prior to the meeting, I'll see that's it. Okay, and again, 
I came here specifically this evening to apologize to you people. You do a wonderful job. And like I said, I'm not a politician, and I don't want to be a politician. And I do respect everything that you have done. Okay? And I will, in the future, try to set up meetings to do this thing the right way. All right? Everyone in this town, every member, uh, every employee, and everyone here has treated me very, very well, very respectfully, and I should be doing the same. So expect that from me in the future. I, 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 I'm going back to my old ways. Okay? <laughs> and not reacting, but acting. And I thank you very much for your time and for everything that you've done. Bert, I'm sure nobody, nobody on the board has taken any exception. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, and everybody is free to say what they want without recrimination, and should should be, and that's the way, that, that's the way these meetings should should be. And, you know, I don't think anybody has taken any exception to anything I've said. But, but thank you for your comments. I have to come in and speak to you personally, rather than... Thank you. Mr. Supervisor, if I may just add, um, again, I think we all appreciate your comments and, and you know your apology. Again, as as our supervisor said, none is necessary. But I think one of the things that we all find is working with governments. Everything takes time, and yeah, you know, we understand that very thoroughly. And I think the more the general public does, the better off we will all work together. Thank you. I shouldn't. And we should do it. We should all respect everybody, and that's the way it should be. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Go enjoy the concert then. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> ten motion to close the public uh, forum. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Longstone? Yes. Councilman Biasad? Yes. Councilman Ryan? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. Joe, okay. ten motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Lundstrom? Yes. Councilman Biasati? Yes. Councilman Lyon? Yes. Councilman Malarkey? Yes. Supervisor Green? Yes. Go enjoy the concert, everybody. Have a wonderful one.